the breathless beauty of the wheeling stars, the flaming glory of the northern lights, the pent-up thunder of doldrum cloud piled up, evolving, undershot by sun. Sailor, give hail. These works are your bounty and your grail. When I met Luke, Luke Leslie there before Christmas, and uh, I was a little bit unsure, but then he told me the story about Bill King. And when he told me the story, I just, man, I had to do it, you know? I mean, Christ Almighty, what a guy. about him I, I got some stuff on the internet and then Luke kindly gave me a couple of books that he'd written and I found him quite a fascinating guy and uh, the fact that he spent 15 years in submarines five of them during the course of the war in fact I think he was the only submarine commander to actually survive the war I mean that must have been I mean I just couldn't even describe what that would feel like I mean, that would be indescribable it, do, it doesn't matter if they come in they look great. I'll tie them to the, the transom to the back. They just look, they look good if they'd be in the back of the shot, maybe. Just give me two seconds, I'll move. In the back of the shot, yeah. You ready? Yeah. The thousand injuries of Fortunato I had borne as I best could. It's great to have someone like him, even for Luke's sake and for Narian's sake, just for the, the practicalities of being on set. And like, he's always coming up with suggestions and he's like, he's really into the role and I mean, like he's, you can see he's really thought about what he's doing, and uh, I think that's only helping feed into the energy around the project. Everything else I've got to pay for, man. <laughs> uh, he, he looks the part, and he, and he looks like he's useful around the boat as well, which uh, would be a nice thing to have. Uh, I think he's doing very well, and uh, hopefully it all comes together and people will see a bit of Bill King in him. space at all it was tiny when you watch the movie now it doesn't look small really but it was so small at any time maybe three people could be in the boat and they couldn't really walk around like one person could only walk from one to the other and the other had to like kind of hide somewhere to let them pass and it was really tight the shot is incredible when you look at, at the test shots and the boat just seems apparently so much larger and when you get down here like it's a cramped working space there was four of us in the back of the boat trying to film pour water direct and do the sound at the same time and it's like it's a very cramped working space but like the way it comes up on screen is beautiful <laughs> uh, out of frame he steps out of frame if he can but just just so that there's a bit of a move at the end of the shot so that we can cut it into the next one Okay. What do you okay. reckon about that, Vin? Is that okay? Uh, Luke would have been involved in a lot of research, uh, getting, you know, even period stuff. Uh, he would have been involved in a lot of uh, putting that together to get the look right. He, you know, he's, he's very uh, insistent on getting the accuracy right because it is based on a true story in a way. Luke contacted me and everything to, you know, the interior of the boat, but he wanted to make it look as close as possible to Bill King's boat. And, uh, basically make the whole interior as white as possible. Try and get props and things, you know, that would be suitable to the time. I want to shoot red, and we couldn't get the red because there was an availability problem. And it was also prohibitively expensive. Um, I think the Sony XD was the perfect sort of fit for the shoot, for this shoot. Yeah. Particularly the way I like to do things. Just quick, fast, allow you to do your thing. At the end of the day, <laughs> start cutting it together. You know what I mean? I thought it was great. He, he had the, the film nearly finished in the edit and we still had the day of shoot to go. But I was wrecked. <laughs> I'll never do that again. Shooting on the X3 was great because it gave us more flexibility with shooting. We could take alternative angles and didn't have to worry about the stock. And most of the time this, the alternative angles, they are in the film now. Perfect example is the 
a shot where or the sequence where Bill takes the, the radio out of water and the water pours out of the radio and he still tries to use it. But we took that like in a wide shot and he he came from the middle of the boat to the foreground, he picked up the radio, he put it down and it's it was comical, like it was like it was just like such a wide frame and like it, it it didn't feel tense at all. So I decided to to take it for a low angle and way tighter and did the radio bit and then tilted up uh, to his face and which in the film I t did a cut so it's two two shots in one t in in one take and it looked way better way intenser because it was tighter and the low angle worked really well as well. Great. If you look at the film now and you think that only two and a half grand went into it, like that you see the money, it's that all, all that money is in front of the screen, the props and everything. That's when we were holed by the great white shark. Right. Put his nose in through the bottom of the boat. <laughs> Jesus, Mary and Joseph. And when you find a hole in the bottom of your boat in the middle of the ocean, it's time to ring up God, <laughs> if you've got his number. <laughs> Jesus, Mary and Joseph. I was very lucky to survive. But I managed to, to uh, mend it. Right. Mend it up somehow or another. We put stuff inside brace it up like that and stuff round the ship. I had 13 ropes going round the ship. I, I, I wiggled up the bow, put them over there, I wiggled up on my ass and put it round the ship, brought them all tight. Okay, this has got to be urgent because the, the, the shark has just hit the boat. Action, I I first heard the story from my dad. He built basically the interior piece of the boat, the uh, the bulkhead, which we then smashed. But I remember distinctly smashing that the Monday night before we shot, at about two in the morning, with a drill and a hammer, making <laughs> tremendous amounts of noise. <laughs> when we needed to get up at like six on the Monday, anyway, like Bill meticulously diagrammed everything. Everything was there on the page. Mm. But we broke my dad's drill. Fuck up. Fuck up. 